This uh, Royal Enfield 500 Indian Bullet engine has uh, provided me with a bit of entertainment over the last day or so. Um, I had to remove it from the bike and strip it down and split the crank to fit this uh, forged steel conrod and roll a big end for the owner. Um, and as usual, I've got the engine stripped down, split the crank, got the new conrod and crank pin ready to go in and at that point I found that the crank pin just sort of dropped right in to the locating eye on time inside flywheel so it was too loose although it was a decent enough fit or would have been a decent enough fit in the drive side flywheel so I needed another time inside flywheel which I couldn't get on its own so I managed to locate a decent second hand crank now the first part of the plan was to split the crank and just use the time inside flywheel on the original drive side and build it up with the uh, Conrod upgrade. But it turned out that the time inside flywheel had a main shaft that looked a little bit knocked about. So I wanted to use the, um, the main shaft from the flywheel that wasn't up to scratch for the crank pin, if you can follow all this. So anyway, I changed the main shaft fitted the time inside flywheel from one crank to the original drive side flywheel of the other crank trued it all up as best as I could, put it in the lathe to check it between centres and the best I could get was an eight thousandths of an inch run out on the uh, main shaft it never came below that any more knocking or bumping on the wooden blocks rather than bring it down, it would come down to eight thousandths of an inch and rather than keep coming down it would go back up again so in the end I decided what I needed to do was use, the match, use a matched pair of flywheels. So I got the drive side flywheel from the second crank that I had, split the crank I just put together and um, used a matched pair of flywheels from the crank I'd just bought. But to compound matters, the threads on the end of the main shaft of one crank were different length to the others. So I had to swap main shafts. So I've now got a pair of flywheels which match and have a pair of main shafts from another crank which I couldn't use. I put it all together thinking that my problems would be over, put it in the uh, in between centres in the lathe and put the clocks on it and got the same eight thousandths of an inch run out on the main shaft all the time. Um, strangely enough the uh, run out was the same all the way along the length of the main shaft and right up to the side of the flywheel to pretty much there where the end of the keyway finishes. So the whole lot was going up and down, it wasn't waggling and it occurred to me that every time I came down to eight thousandths of an inch clearance and went for that little bit more in order to reduce that number a little bit, it would go back up. And long story short, seems to be that the centres in the main shaft aren't concentric with the main shaft itself. And when you spin the crank, these, when you spin it in the lathe, these were obviously holding centre, but this was throwing. So I decided that the only thing I could think of doing was put it together and put it in the crankcases in the main bearings and see what happened. My reasoning being that if there was a throw on this for any reason, if this wasn't waggling around, which it wasn't, it should run true in a main bearing. And at the very worst, I might end up with eight thousandths of an inch run out with the flywheel moving up and down as it spun. And I thought, well, None of this sounds very good, but I'll put it into the crankcases, which have got new main bearings in anyway, and just see what happens. And I haven't got any seals in yet to cause any drag on the main shafts, but the new main bearings are in. And I was quite surprised with the result. I've got the crank crankcases clamped together, and I can rotate the crank back that way. Let go. You can see, see the old thing, let go. Yeah. Up they come. And the other way. It's 
that's spinning nice and freely. There's absolutely no binding or drag or anything there. And there was no signs of the crankcases trying to walk against each other, even before I did the clamps up. So, I'm actually going to say that this is good to go. Although, it would have been impossible to get low and accurate readings between centres on the lathe. Thanks to the run out between the centre hole in the main shaft and the outside diameters of it. So this is the first time I've come across this, but I'm very, very happy with the way the crank spins inside the cases, so I know there's nothing to worry about. There's a very, very slight perceptible throw right at the end there where the threads are on that main shaft. But that's not a worry, because the nut on that will be tightened up against the rotor, and the nut sort of running slightly off centre when it's done up is not a concern at all spins nice and quietly and freely so the next thing I'm going to do is get the seals the oil seals into the crank cases and put it back together and bolt it up and start putting an engine together and uh, thankfully that's job done <laughs>